Judge rules in Tyrese custody battle. Denzel Washington raised a few eyebrows. And Nigerian women make Olympic history, yes. Rizza, Rizza, Rizza from the Wu-Tang files trademark infringement lawsuit. Snoop Diggy Dog goes on a rant. And we have the photo of the week and more, so stay tuned. Welcome to What's the 4 on your smart source for urban, lifestyle, and entertainment news. I'm Tizzy Cox. I'm Onika McQueen. Hey, I haven't seen you in a minute. I miss so you. Happy, happy you. everything. Yes. We miss you guys, too. Happy holidays. Yes. So, let's get started with some quick takes. So, you know political commentator Angela Rye, right? Mm-hmm. So, she's been dating Common, and ever since he's she started... So cute. He is cute. He is cute. And they make a cute couple. Um, so, ever since she started dating him, she's been getting death threats. Really? She's been getting death threats. Yep. Some of the threats even reference places that she and Common had been to together but weren't publicized. So that suggests that this person is following her. Oh, that's her girlfriends. Her. That's so, like just <laughs> ass girlfriends. Like, you know what? Bitch, you got to die. <laughs> <laughs> Good. That's right. She's <laughs> taking Common off the market. That's Erica Badu, man. Any dog going well. Oh, it's too nice. Did that's you a see, long did you see her photo challenge? Just, no. Oh, okay. Sorry. What? Yikes. I'm okay. a juvenile delinquent. That's just how stuff goes. Well, hopefully they find a perpetrator. Speaking of juvenile delinquents, Karuchi, right? Oh, okay. Right, so Karuchi, our trend, you know, she used to date Chris Brown, you mm -hmm. know, and her manager, Jacob York, were on the Angie Martina show, um, uh, Power 105, mm -hmm. And they were talking about Karuchi being on a Yala's Fix My Life. Yes. Right, yes. But they, I love that show. Mm -hmm. I, I like that show too, but she really can't fix your life in two episodes. I don't know. Exactly. But I like a Yala. But they threw a little shade. So really? they asked about her, they asked Karuchi about the experience and what her and her team said mm -hmm. is, you know, they like the show, but Ayala was fake. Come on. Mm. Um, I don't know. I don't think Yala is fake. That's one thing. I don't think so either. I think Oprah can smell fake. You think so? I, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to trust Oprah's fake dar. Mm. No? Well, you know what? You know, you're right. You're right. I think if, if Yala was fake, Oprah would have picked up on it. Yeah. And been like, mm mm. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So, now Rizza, remember? So Rizza has filed a, <laughs> a Rizza from the Wu Tang Clan? Yes. Yes, oh. he's filed a trademark lawsuit against a Brooklyn dog walking company that's named, guess what? What? Woof Tang Clan. Woof Tang Clan. Woof Tang Clan. Like Woof Gang Puck, kind of. <laughs> a wolf. I'm sorry. It's a play off of Wu Tang Clan, obviously, mm -hmm. and Rizza is not having it. So basically, the owner of the company, his name is Marty Kachuan, I think that's how you pronounce it, and he claimed that he walked, get this, the illest group of dogs in New York City. And on his website, he has a whole bunch of like classic hip hop albums with dogs instead of the actual artists on it. So he thinks he's paying like homage to Call all of black the... people dogs? No. <laughs> well, he's, well, he's black himself, so I don't know. Oh, okay. But okay. yeah, he said, you know what? He's a Wu Tang fan. He's a dog walker. He thought the name was a good idea. So what's happening now with it? I think he's probably going to have to drop that name. Well, I think the RZA needs some cash because who gives a goddamn? They like, do. If you think about that. They do. Oh my God, are you kidding me? Poor Wu Tang Clan. You gonna -uh. sue some regular dog walking company? Come on, but look what they're doing. He's really making money off of Wu Tang Clan now. Come on. How much money could he be making a dog walker? And he was selling the shirts for twenty four and twenty five. You know what I mean? Like he was selling stuff too. This sound like selling. hate. This sound like hate. I feel it's it. It's make me itchy. It's not Speaking hate. of dogs. Roof, 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 rapper oh, Snoop Dogg. That was a nice, that was a nice segue. That was yeah. good. Yeah, 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 cause girl. I'm a comedian. That's what we be doing. <laughs> so, anyway, Snoop Dogg is not one to mince words. So let me tell Never. you, Snoop Dogg was clapping, boom, 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 at the Target. The Target. Everyone is. I feel so sorry for this man, Donald Trump. You did not just say <laughs> that you felt sorry. Well, take that you, out. No, I'm not scared of these people. Any dog going away, the whole world, the whole world going to be clapping, clapping at Donald Trump. Like, anyway, like, that is a lot. Yeah, and, anyway, he, and he's clapping back, too. Please. Well, Donald he, Trump <laughs> could take it, and he can give it. So Anytime I say Donald Trump, you're getting mad. I don't understand what's wrong word. with you. Okay. So he clapped at Donald Trump and cussed him out in a video in the defense of LeVar Ball. Right? right, who okay. is the father of the UCLA, UCLA basketball player who got caught in uh, China for shoplifting. Right, you remember that yeah, story? with, the, with the, the sunglasses, and I'm mm -hmm. like, why did you mm -hmm. do that? And if you check out the video, I don't think you should do it at work. It went a little cray. 
right? Don't do it at work because yeah, you might get fired. So, <laughs> but Snoop Dogg just went all in on on Donald Trump. He's yeah, like, enough, but he's enough. been coming. He's been coming for Trump for a while now. So I'm not like surprised. so many people come for Trump at this point. I feel so. Uh, don't you don't like even God? Say like it. he's like an easy target at this point. It's like. He it's like makes with the himself. Person. He makes himself a target. That's the thing. He makes himself a target. So you know, if you make it that easy for people, they're gonna come at you. He's the president of the free world. Mm. Let me go on to some happy news. <laughs> so, congratulations to Jordan Sparks. She married Dana Isaiah in a secret ceremony in July. That's really oh, good nice. of her to like keep that under wraps. That's hard to do as a celebrity. And she's now pregnant with her first child. She's pregnant. Yes, yeah, she Jordan is, and Sparkle. she's due. In the spring. Nice, nice. And more baby news. Okay. Kevin Hart. The wife, the wife stayed. Clearly. The baby's here. Yeah. Kenzo Hart has... And you know what's so funny that I love about Kevin Hart and this baby? Uh, he didn't, like, hide it like Jay-Z and Beyonce. You know, you yeah. trying to find pictures. He, as soon as she, like, got out of the like, hospital, ah, he's like, here it is. Right? Ah. He's like, here it is. So, but, I, yeah, that's dope, right? Yeah, it is, but I hope they... Make, you know, keep it together and, you know, have a nice long well, if marriage. Well, she, if she sits down and have a conversation with um, Nicole Murphy and um, mm. my Mary Harvey, she would know you just stay with that man because what happens when you, <laughs> if you, if you deal with a comedian, he's going to be a little tainted. It is what it Ooh. is and you just work it out. Mm. He's short I, from Philly. I mean, he's going to cheat. Oh, wow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Just expect some shit, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> But so Jordan Peele, right? Yes. Says that Tiger Woods is in the sunken place. Let's just state the obvious. Tiger Woods has been, been in the sunken, in sunken place. place. He invented the sunken place. <laughs> Actually, he. He. <laughs> Show him. <laughs> he said. He did not just say that. I'm mad you should say that. It's the sunken place is an island off of Tahiti. <laughs> That's so crazy. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Let's state the obvious. Tiger Woods is in the sunken place yeah. for playing golf with Donald Trump. Well, I'm in the sunken place, too, because guess what? Me, Amber Rose. No, not Amber Rose. Who's that guy? Amber Rosa. What's her name? Okay, yeah. Is she in the wild? Like, yeah. sometimes you just got to go with the underdog because that's how you do the come up. How was he? Hey, Mr. Trump. Yeah, you know, under- it's going to be. You know, underdog. What? What's those two ladies? Those two ladies from the This is like Diamond of- and... Whatever in velvet or whatever, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they in the sunken place too, right there with Tiger. The sunken place, having so, dinner. So then, who wants to be woke? Woke is scary. No, it's not. Woke well, then is, again, <laughs> people start giving you death threats. You see what happened scary. to Angela Rye. Woke is scary, but she should leave comment alone because that's that's Erica Badu man. But okay. Anyway. Mm-hmm. All right. So in some black girl magic news, which is what I love, Nigerian women are set to make history. As the first, as Africa's first ever Olympic bobsled team. And they're Nigeria's first Winter Olympics team, like ever. Is this a joke? No, it's not. It's okay. amazing. It is they, amazing. They bobsledding, ladies bobsledding. Yeah, remember like the Jamaican bobsledding? I remember. Like it was years a, ago? Yeah. Yeah, so they'll be competing in the 2018 Winter Olympics in Pyeongchang, South Korea. February 9th to 25th, 2018. Congratulations, ladies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So while mm. we're talking about making history, though. We got to shout out Cardi B. Don't you like her? Cardi B. You know where I'm at. Right. You know this, where I be. This oh. is bloody shows. If I don't speak, <laughs> if I don't speak to you, it's because I don't act with you. Exactly. Exactly. So she is I making I can't believe that this history. is a big deal and everybody's all excited about this. Of course crazy. it is. No, okay. it's a big deal. I like, mean, I'm good. For, she's Team Libra. Do your thing, Cardi. And she's half Trini, so you know I got a bigger up. Come on. Oh, she's half Trini? Yeah, she is. Dominican and Trini. Yes. She where probably five, made that where, up. Okay. <laughs> no. Okay, whatever. Okay, so Go she's the, you, the first solo female rapper to ever be nominated for a best rap performance Grammy. So that's awesome. That and awesome. she's the first person, was it? The first person. Oh, we talked about this a few months ago though. Mm-hmm. Like she was the first person female rapper to make it to number 1 since Lauren Hill. And, remember that? And and the Louboutins, right? So I read an article that they said that her, being her her um, lyric is these are expensive, red these are bloody these, shoes, these right? Are red, yeah. yeah, like so the stock went up in Louboutin because like uh, ev- everybody's yeah. trying to get them a pair. Well, I mean, and they I can't think, afford it though. Cardi B can, bloody, but they can't. No, no, you can afford it. Like people buy a lot of things. They crazy. Like people stand like, a lot for Jordans. Like, 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 no, they like a two thousand dollars. 
Even worse. <laughs> <Listen>. <laughs> that is crazy. That is crazy. But you guys keep it locked. We'll be right back with what's popping. Stay tuned. Bloody shoes. Being a dad can be tough. No, no, no. What do you mean she's not coming? When's the fairy princess coming? Any minute now. <laughs> but when you're willing to do anything, it is I. Cruz, zinc or bell? Yeah. Okay, time for cake. It's always worth it. I know it's really you, Drew. I'm just pretending for the other kids. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4-DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Welcome back to What's the 411 Now, let me tell you, we have some stories. Uh, Harvey Weinstein, have you heard of him? <laughs> <laughs> Since yeah. the allegations of, against him have been coming out, like the sexual abuse claims have been like just a plethora of them. They're just everywhere. So even Terry Crews, you know, big, brawly yeah. Terry Crews. We have spoken about he him, right? Op- he opened up about it. He said that he had been groped by mm-hmm. an agent at a party. And I'm just trying to figure out why didn't Terry punch him in the face. But, but the angry black man can't do it. If that's someone why, gropes your that's genitals. That's why he was like, what are you doing? And the guy let go and kind of, you know, walked away. But his wife was right there. He was in a crowd of people. I think he was just shocked. That's the, what the he balls said. balls of it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pun intended. That's hilarious. But, um, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Keep going. Why yeah. do you think people now are, are coming forward, one, and then... Believe in the women because so many people are coming out now. Like, I think that's the that's the new question. Like, no, have the, you been sexually harassed? Well, yeah, but I think the question really is why did it take so long to believe women? Like this has been happening for ever. De- you know what I mean? Since time, since the beginning of time, probably right. And nobody was believing it. I mean, it took what was it forty something women for Bill Cosby for people to even start questioning. Well, maybe he kind of sort of did something, and that was like. 40-something women. Right. So it just speaks to how we value women. I don't know why it is that, for whatever reason, the onus is always on women, A, to stop their own sexual assault, right? It's like, oh, well, what were you wearing? Or where were you? Or why did you go here? And it's not on really teaching men how to be decent human beings. Like, I but was doing... this sexual was, prowess? It's just like a I thing. Don't know. You know? I was, okay, so I was doing this story on sexual assault. So there's uh-huh. this guy, his name is Tony Porter. He has this organization called The Call to Men. Oh, I know Tony. Right, right. He, uh, so uh, um, A friend of mine sits, sits on his board. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you know the kind of work that he does, kind of, you know, teaching the about... The T. Cons- the T and consent. Have you seen his video about the T and consent? I have, I have. He's like, don't force women to drink tea. If you make <laughs> them tea... Yeah, you have. You guys have to do that. Uh, call to Men uh, Consent. A tea. It's, 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 it's he has really a number. He has a lot. Of, he has a lot of them because mm-hmm. he does that whole curriculum thing. Mm-hmm. And what was shocking to me is he's talking to young boys, right? So they're like teenagers, and he did this whole survey, like how many of them know what consent is. They don't. Three hundred boys. Nineteen percent. Nineteen percent knew what consent was. Like, that is crazy to me. So then it it becomes easy to see how these type of things can happen, Mm -hmm. and it's this kind of gray area. And so I think it's just going to keep going. I think there's going to be more men who are accused, more women who are finally going to come out and say, this this is what happened to me. Yeah. And yeah, it's, just, it's, just a, it's a turning point in our society. What he society. said, I, I went to a talk that he had. Like he, he, I didn't have a TED Talk, too, but I went yeah, to a talk. Yeah, he had talk. a talk in my office, and what he talked about it, he said that women that are associated with men uh, are respected by other men. Like, so if you're a single woman, like, people will say stuff and try to hit on you. But if you're the daughter of someone that I know or the girlfriend Mm. of someone that I know, then I'll refrain myself. It's just crazy how it's kind of, we are, we just socialize that way to look at at, at, at property and lesser. And you run like a girl and you talk like a girl and and you, and and, and like a girl is a disrespect. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I I, I watched this um, this a video about that and said what does a girl run like and the girls were like flailing their arms and acting all Which crazy is like not true at all. <laughs> and then when they talk to them later and right. they have like this whole discussion with the young women they were like what does a girl run like and it was like then they started doing the best that they could but in in the in the mind of our us socially right. we're just like you hit like a girl you do like right. this, like a you do, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's really like yeah. how do you how do you make gender 
equal when and women don't even see ourselves as right, equal. You have like to what start is with equal? Kids. Well, what does equal even mean to me? Like I like I want to I want to make the same money as mm-hmm. a man, right? I want to I don't want to make sixty seven cents on the dollar or forty two cents because I'm African American. Right. I want to make the same, but I still in my mind socially I want you to pay for the meal. Mm-hmm. I want you to open my door. I want you to put on my coat. So what what are we what are we saying? But I mean, it's a difference between you're talking about treating the two sexes the same and then treating them equally. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like you were talking about how oh, running like a girl and doing things like a girl. Men try to distance themselves from that because somehow that means that it's weaker, weaker yeah. and worse. And it's like what Tony was saying, speaking mm-hmm. to him again. It was really about as kids given young boys permission to cry, to do all the things that we say only girls can do. So they don't look at that as something that's weird and other and strange. Because we say, we say right? act like a man and he's a two-year-old. And the boy is like <laughs> crying because he's hurting. Like he needs right. to cry. Like we need to give our kids permission to just we be kids. Should, we and probably like, should have a conversation about this. Like we, we should. It's, it's a lot. Yeah, it is a lot. Speaking on something else is very, very controversial. So you heard about what Denzel Washington said recently? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Denzel, you know, he's in this new movie, uh, Roman J. Israel Esquire, and it's Mm -hmm. kind of about the injustices in the criminal justice system and all of that. So people have been asking him questions about, you know, what does he think about policing and black incarceration? And he said, look, you know what? You can't really blame black incarceration on the system. You got to blame the parents. It starts at home, he says, quote, it starts with how you raise your children. If a young man doesn't have a father figure, he'll go find a father figure. So, you know, I can't blame the system. It's unfortunate that we make such easy work for them. So what do you think? Is Denzel Washington correct or is he missing some other aspects of this issue? I think that he's correct, but I think he probably should be careful because when Bill Cosby started speaking out about, when Bill Cosby started speaking out about the uh, state of the black family and, you know, stop Yeah, well, people stuff, came for him. People came for his neck, right? So, and, and I want to say that Denzel Washington uh, grew up with a single black mother, right? Because I remember not, me, not he sure said something about the Boys and Girls Club. My, my thought is everything starts with the family. It's a okay. unit. Everything you you have to blame everything on the family or the lack thereof. I just totally agree. I understand that, but as we've talked about in this show before, there are disparities in how the criminal justice system treats black people versus white people. We get harsher sentences when we go up for similar crimes. We get harsher sentences for years. Remember the Rockefeller drug laws and mm-hmm. how mass you, incarceration. If you, if you had crack cocaine, you would get a billion years, and if you had like some co- some cocaine, you would get five or whatever. These types of things are happening, and they're real, and they are part of the system as well. So, yes, everything starts at home, of course, but I don't think that you can look at it outside of this system that is built to incarcerate black people. That that has a a point. Yeah. So, Denzel, be careful. Unless you're under a rock, it's a whole new world. <laughs> oh, girl, no. That's, that's, no, no. You, what you trying to say I can't sing? But let me tell you something. Prince Harry <laughs> has, his, has his new princess. I'm so happy. Yes. Meghan Markle. Yay. Yes. Black girl magic. Exactly. Or half exactly. girl, half black girl magic. I don't know. Whatever. Like. <laughs> It's so funny how we claim black. We I know. know. Black. No, did you see on Twitter yeah, yeah. and everything all the memes and stuff? Like, what's gonna happen at the at the wedding? And they had like people doing line dances and stuff, and black people like jumping up and down. Why do we do that stuff? to each other? We know yeah. that girl's educated and and cultured. Stop. She's not gonna do that at all. She's from Compton, though. Yes, so. she is. Yes, she I'm is. excited. Congratulations I'm to the royal family and the excited. queen. Wait, the she had, Queen Elizabeth had to give her written consent because the six line down or something like that. I don't even yeah. know how deep that went. I don't yeah. really know, but I I did see that the ring that he mm. gave her, which was really beautiful, actually had diamonds from his mother's collection, and that was really like a beautiful way. He said, "Yeah," and it was yellow diamonds because yellow was one of his mom's favorite colors, and so he really wanted to bring his mom, even though she passed away, into this new phase of his life. I was like, that's so, so sweet. Dope. That was so sweet. I was like, oh my God, they're so cute. Oh, they like, are so cute. I didn't prince. think that it could get better than Kate Middleton, my but prince. I guess it can. It always gets better. Good for yeah. Congratulations, Royal Couple. Yes. 
My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. I wouldn't use this one. He helps me with my decision-making. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Hey, going out like that? Yeah, why? Well, um, what would the neighbors think? <laughs> Look what I have. Mr. Bird, remember? Bark, bark, bark. We're just playing. We're just playing. I'm trying to get you out of here. Even still. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. So you already know this from watching our show, but Tyrese is in a bitter custody battle with his ex-wife, Norma Gibson. Tyrese who? Gibson? Yes, Tyrese mm. Gibson. Well, according to TMZ, the judge in the case has ruled that Tyrese will have his daughter for Christmas and New Year's, and both Tyrese and his ex-wife, Norma, will get 50-50 joint custody Good beginning point. in January, mm -hmm. which is great. TMZ also reports that neither Tyrese nor Norma Gibson, and there's a reason why I'm using her last name, I'll explain later, neither Tyrese nor Norma Gibson can use corporal punishment in disciplining their 10-year-old daughter, so they can't do that. Tyrese must take parenting classes focused on appropriate disciplining of his child. Both Tyrese and Norma Gibson must enroll in high conflict parenting classes. Mm -hmm. And Tyrese and his daughter must enroll in joint therapy with a psychologist. And his daughter, Shayla, has to also undergo individual counseling. Okay, that's so, a lot. Well, and it's a lot. Good for it, them. it is a lot. They need it all. Yeah, so what do you what do you think? Do you think that this was a good judgment on the part of the judge? Do you think this is a good way to bring this to... Well, I, I don't think you can make people get along, but that high con, uh, conflict resolution, maybe that may work, but you can't make people get along. And uh, I think that we need to talk about the real issue, which is the mental health. Oh my right? God! So if we're going to talk about an issue, <laughs> yeah. we, gotta, we need to talk about mental health because why don't they address that? Because maybe all this counseling and stuff, maybe something's going to come out of the counseling. I hope so, you know, but they didn't where, say... Where, you know, they find Tyree to be... Because, I, I, I mean, I'm just not sure. I follow him on social media heavily because I love being entertained and he's like in Dubai now like first you said that Will and Jade was gonna give you this money and you're so broke and help you out and now he's chilling like it's a lot he is doing the absolute he is most doing I do think the he's most. bipolar but they didn't say that he had to take counseling on his own so it's only joint class, joint counseling maybe, you know I mean? maybe so I, maybe I feel like he counselor. actually needs his maybe. own counseling uh, maybe the counselor will, will recommend that later. But I know that mental health is a real thing. Mm -hmm. And mental health in parenting mm -hmm. is a real thing as well. Even when it comes down to depression or anxiety. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So, I mean, uh, we just pray for you, Tyrese. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know what to say. No, well, what to say. Well, well, when he was leaving the court, he had some things to say. So he said, Crazy thing. yes, he told TMZ he had over 400 hours of footage and that Michael Moore needed to call him. So, you know, Michael Moore, because people give up about you <laughs> to make a well, documentary. So now, you are on... not the dog on Trump or the president or no, nobody cares. No conspiracy theorists. But that's the thing. He was, he was saying that and he wants, you know, he's he's very angry with Norma. And his whole thing is well, on Instagram, he even went further and he's like, Norma, why are you using my last name? Like the only people who should be the only people who should be using my last name are myself, my child, and my new wife. So, so she yeah, gets to so keep it. you get to keep your surname <laughs> if you want to. I'm divorced, but no, I mean, well, he's mad at that too, and so he's, he's mad coming. at the rock. He's mad. <laughs> he said that he and Jada have been texting back and forth. Like I don't know. I just like to watch it because it's very entertaining, but. It's really scary in a way because he he's outbursts. unstable. He's unstable. Out he's unstable. Poor baby. That's all I could say. So do Poor you baby. think this is the last that we have heard about this case and, and this whole custody battle? No, because if that lady didn't want him near that child, there's something. Smoke, fire. You know, there's something going on. But, you know, it's his kid, so, I mean, stay tuned. And he still wants them them t shirts and stuff. You know, he has that what Shayla's helping or something like that. I don't know. I can't remember the name, but it's like yeah. He's like yeah. This is this is the fund where you're supporting you know fathers who are trying to do the right thing. So buy these t shirts and stuff like he that. He's at a GoFundMe. No, it's like I'm a, a it's actual web, website. I'm gonna sit down. <laughs> and so is Tyrese. 
Maurice is not going to sit down. Well, he knows that once he did the stuff with the black ladies and he started coming for black women, like, you know how you we are. You know how we are. We never stop. This story can go on and on and on and on, but it won't. No. No. <laughs> it will not. All right. Keep it locked. Now, we have our photo of the week, which is a magical yes. photo of Serena Williams and her new husband, mm. Alex Ohanian. Yes. Yay. Slay, Serena, <laughs> slay. My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. I wouldn't use this one. He helps me with my decision making. Never. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. So we can all use a little motivation. And our motivational quote of the week comes from Rakia Mays on LinkedIn. Yay! Yay. Thanks, Rakia. Good job. So it goes, you can't win in life if you're losing in your mind. Change your thoughts and it'll change your life. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much for that. Going out like that? Yeah, why? Well, um, what would the neighbors think? <laughs> I see you! Come look at Mr. Feather! Look what I have. Mr. Bird, remember? Bark, bark, bark. We're just playing! We're just playing! I'm trying to get you out of here! Even still. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Mom, can we get some ice cream? Please, Mom, please. No, we're having dinner oh. soon. Please. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. Being a dad can be tough. No, no, no. What do you mean she's not coming? When's the fairy princess coming? Any minute now. <laughs> But when you're willing to do anything... It is I, Krugs, Zink or Bell. Yeah. Okay, time for cake. It's always yeah. worth it. I know it's really you, Drew. I'm just pretending for the other kids. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4-DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Well, that's going to do it for this week's edition of What's the 411, your smart source for urban lifestyle and entertainment news. Until next week, check out our website, what's the 411.com. Yes, and remember to hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, What's the 411 TV. You know what? And download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, and Google Play Music. Right. I'm Kizzy Cox, and on behalf of Anika McLean, thank you for watching What's the 411. We'll see you next time. Who's got the 411? 411, they got the 411. Who's got the 411? We got the 411. What's the 411? The 411, what's the 411? They got the 411. What's the 411? They got the 411. What's the 411? What's the 411? What's the 411?